now we have learned what do we mean by good, bad and services. So, now we can talk about resources. What do we mean by resources? See, the thing is goods do not appear from thin air. You need to put some inputs to produce these goods like TV. It needs several kinds of inputs. It needs raw material, it needs labor, it needs intellectual resources, it needs entrepreneurial resources to produce it. Okay. So, whatever we need to produce our good, we can call them broadly resources. So, let us look at the broad categories of resources and the first resource kind of resource that comes to my mind is natural resource. What do we have as natural resources? One can of course, one has to write land, without land we would not have any agricultural goods, water, nature also provides us with minerals. We should also add wild wood and so on. Second kind of second broad category of resources that comes to my mind is labor. Now, in labor we consider two different kind of labor. One is physical and second is knowledge or is best or we give it a name called human capital, human, human capital. I will describe the term capital little later on. So, what do we mean by physical labor? Whenever, when we have in any, any industry we look at, we hire workers to work on different equipments to produce some output. That is what we mean by physical labor. And what is knowledge based labor? That, that only physical effort is not sufficient to produce something. The intellectual effort, the design of, the design of a product or creating a blueprint of a product, these are knowledge based. So, we tend to differentiate between physical labor and knowledge based labor. Also, it is not a bad idea to include entrepreneurship as a form of knowledge based labor. What is entrepreneurship? It is ability to organize all other factors of production to produce goods and services. Okay. It is ability to organize all other factors of production to produce goods and services. Now, let us move to third kind of resources and that the name we give is manufactured resources. And broadly here what we have is capital. What do we mean by capital? All the inputs or factor of production had to be produced in the first place and they are used for further production. Let me talk about capital once again. Like here look at land, water, mineral, oil, they are provided by nature. Labor is also it is endowed us, we are embodiment of labor, physical labor as well as knowledge based labor and we convert our knowledge and thought into blueprints and design, but that is again pertaining to labor. But how about this pen that I am using here to write? It is also being used to produce some good. What is that good? The teaching that I am teaching which we are participating in production of good called 
teaching, it would satisfy your intellectual need. Okay. So, here let us look at the resources that those are being used to produce this particular good called teaching, labor, physical effort of course, very little bit intellectual effort. Third, we have these LCD screen, pen. So, these are being used in production of this teaching. So, these are inputs, but these were not available in nature on their own, these were manufactured. So, these kind of inputs are called manufactured input or better term is capital. They are fabricated by bringing some kind of natural resources labor together okay. and these are used in production of some other goods and services. Okay. So, I hope by now resources should be clear to you. So, now let us look at the third term that we used in the definition. Just to remind you, what was our definition of economics? That economics is the study of allocation of scarce resources to satisfy individual wants or desire. So, the term here is wants. Now, one can very well raise this question, why are we talking about wants, why not needs? So, let us pay attention to wants versus needs. Think about the difference between wants and needs. What are the needs? Needs are goods that you must have in order to survive like food, basic clothing, while wants are goods that you must have in order to feel satisfied. So, key word is whatever goods in whichever quantity satisfy you, those are your wants. So, of course, if you look at these two basic things, needs and wants, needs are more fundamental than wants. You would prefer, you would prefer that we rather talk about needs than wants. Then why we are talking about wants in economics? The problem is, problem is the needs are very difficult to figure out. Okay? You may always claim that you are needier than you really are. Even though you do not need something, you would say I need this, because it is plain simple statement you may express that you need this, even though it is not, it is not really that fundamental for your uh, survival. But wants is very clearly, it is totally up to you, whatever makes you satisfied. It is easier to observe because when you make decision, when you go to the market or when you go anywhere, you buy something or you consume something, it indicates that you wanted that particular item. So, the of course, needs are more fundamental than wants, but wants are more easily, e more easy to track. Needs are very, very difficult to track, just because you can claim, you can always claim that you are needier than you really are. So, that is why we are going to talk about wants, not needs. Now, the next term is scarcity. The simple meaning of scarcity is shortage, lack, dearth. It implies, what does it imply? It implies that our wants, not needs, remember our wants for goods are greater than the availability of limited resources to satisfy those wants. So, if we look at why do we have a scarcity? Because the simple fundamental reason that we have scarcity is that we have unlimited wants. We always want more, more. Okay? So, more is the key word. And this is typical human nature. 
In economics, we are not talking about how we can control our desire, but rather than we are talking about how we make decisions. Okay? So, scarcity is there because we always want more and with limited resources available in this universe, in this on this planet, we cannot have unlimited amount of everything. So, that is why we have scarcity. Okay? And scarcity, scarcity leads to choices, because when you do not have unlimited amount of everything, unlimited amount of resource to produce unlimited amount of all the goods that you desire, you will have to make a choice what to produce, in what quantity you should produce a particular good. 